Last episode in our living room makeover, we tackled the fireplace wall, adding a plaster texture, and restored our salvaged vintage mantle. This week, we're continuing to make pretty progress by DIYing our brick hearth and building out our bookshelves. Welcome back. It has been a very cozy rainy morning here at the cottage and the sun is just starting to come out now. A fireplace totally changes the mood in a house. It really does. This is actually the first time I've ever had a fireplace in any apartment I've rented or up to this home. And this is like, the, this is just so cozy. So we are back in the living room this week. If you missed last week's episode, it was episode one of our living room makeover. We accomplished quite a bit. We painted all the walls, we did all the plaster and filled the holes in the drywall on the fireplace wall. And I was able to perfect the kind of surround of the fireplace uh, to make it look really polished. And we cleaned up our mantle. The mantle is looking really great. It's just cleaned up. So this week is gonna be another big week in the living room. We need to paint the side of the beadboard. I asked you guys last week what you thought about Millstone Gray, which was the swatch over here. And majority agreed, it's definitely gonna give that moody feeling that I love and that you guys were like, yes, go for it. And then probably do something different in terms of paint on the actual fireplace wall itself. So we're gonna do that. We're gonna build the hearth out of brick. You were like, yes, do it. I was like, okay, we're doing it, we're doing it. Installing the mantle, doing things, just continuing to make progress on the living room makeover. So I'm gonna start with the first coat of the Millstone Gray on these side beadboards because I wanted it a little more durable. I went with a pearl finish, which is satin, so it's more durable. And I also was gonna use the Benjamin Moore Advanced line, but they didn't have any at the store. So I went with Regal Select. I think it's gonna be okay. Already with just the work that we've done in one episode on the living room, it's made such a huge difference. I mean, there's no longer holes in the fireplace. That is a huge step in the right direction. decided to make the hearth for the fireplace out of the original brick. <laughs> I mean, how could we not? It just means that we're using all of the salvage material, which makes me really happy. So I don't know how many bricks we're going to need. I tried to calculate it, but I wasn't sure, but I know we're gonna need quite a few. So I'm just gonna start calling them over. bricks you know when we when we demolished the fireplaces we didn't bother to clean them up I mean I did I didn't I say we I did not bother to clean them up I just put them back there if they were solid I put them back there so we ended up with 76 of them and I'm just using a scraper and the old mortars coming off like like no big deal so 
what I thought was going to be a pretty intense process of like, am I gonna get all this mortar off? It's actually not that bad. One's done. project so it's a good thing we had 76 <laughs> salvage so we had plenty so now we need to build the box so since I'm not doing solid bricks so I'm not like putting a brick and stacking 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 to make our dimension I'm actually building a box to act as a frame to put and mortar the brick to I start every project drawing it out sketching it out doing the math so that I can actually wrap my head around it I started with my finished measurement of the hearth with the brick, with the box, everything, what I wanted it to finish at. Then I worked backwards, subtracting the dimensions of the brick to determine the finished box size that I needed, and then worked backwards again to figure out what are the actual measurements of the two by fours that I need to cut. Two pieces at 17 and a half and two pieces at two and three quarters to build a box. So I just cut one, so let's, I'm gonna test it to make sure that it works. So the bottom two by four, and then the two, two and three quarters go here, and then this goes on top. Then we're gonna come back with plywood on top, half inch plywood. So I also took that into consideration in the measurement. And it should be a half inch sh too short because we need the plywood. And it is, look at that difference. Half inch right there. So this is the exact box that we need. Okay, we need to build uh, three more of these boxes. these together I'm just gonna use my multi-purpose screws and a 90 degree angle so I just make sure everything's really square I want these to stay really secure so Make sure that they're plumb and then attach them to the floor and the back, probably, whatever I can. Aha. Now we're gonna come back with a piece of plywood here on the front. And now the top. This is all scrap plywood we've had from building the house. Okay, so since I've never laid bricks before, or rock in general, we hired that to be done at the house. I'm kind of comparing this to laying tile. Um, so I went to the store the first time and got quick creep mortar mix and it was just add water. Then I went and I was like, I don't know if this is gonna be enough. Then I went back and I saw this one, Alamo White Masonry Cement. And I was like, oh, it's white, let's get that. But I think that this needs a, another portion, it needs like sand. Well, this is ready to go. <laughs> It was, a, it was a learning um, experience for me. So we're gonna go with this one, the quick, quick Creek Mortar Mix. Just add water, this is a 60 pound bag. I'm feeling like this consistency is really good. It's kind of like, like a little bit slippery, but it's still like solid in some ways. No, go, 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 go. I feel a lot of pressure, so I feel like it's gonna dry. So we're gonna go for it. We are, we're going for it. I, I don't know how else to say it. Put some down. Realize this is going to be very messy. <laughs> I, I realize that. I made like half of this bucket really did two four six eight and twelve bricks being generous with it I don't think I'm using quite as much as like a you know if I was building a wall 
Do you know how it like, like oozes out both sides? I'm not doing that, obviously. I was thinking this was like the plaster of Paris that dries so quick. I had to move so quickly. This is not bad at all. This is, is definitely more forgiving. One me and one me Forever it's our show I don't know how and don't know why But I'll, I'll be toasting all my life finish the hearth. Well, 99% of the hearth. So right on the corners, I couldn't get away with doing the whole hearth without cutting anything. So I have one piece, one brick that I basically need to cut in half to, for each of the corners. For never having done a project like this before and kind of just dreaming it up in my head what it would look like and how it would be laid out, I think it did a pretty good job. I definitely don't want it red like this. Um, I think there just there needs to be a, sh a streamline of the color palette. So I always knew that I would lay it and then we would paint it or lime wash it or do something to it. So don't pay too much attention to the coloring. Obviously we have to paint the mantle. We have to lime wash the fireplace wall itself. And then also in here, we're gonna do black and then we have to do something in the heart. So all the pieces are starting to come together. So color palette will be the next stage. So the next step is I wanna work on the sides, the bookshelf part of this wall. Uh, so three foot up, I want there to be cabinetry all along the bottom. I'm thinking three cabinet doors, it's more storage. It can also hold um, like the TV kind of equipment, the internet equipment, everything runs to this wall. And then above it, we're gonna do floating shelves all the way up. Yeah, 57 and a half inches. Let's see if they're both the same. Yes, they are the same. So 57 and a half inches across. And then I want them three foot up, but I want to see kind of like where three foot hits this break between the wainscoting and the wall. Because, uh, you know, it's kind of a weird, oh wow, it is exactly three foot. If we did three cabinets or three, three cabinet doors rather, it would make each one like 19 inches wide. I think that's pretty good. Figured out all my dimensions and since our cabinet is relatively skinny. Where it's gonna be 14 inches deep and then we're gonna add the three quarter inch face frame, you know, and then there's gonna be a topper on it. So at 14 inches, I feel like we can get away with doing one cabinet, like one big box. And then obviously the face frame will create a natural three piece divide. So there's gonna be three doors, but it'll be all one box, but two sides, a bottom, and then a support for the back and the top. seen me do this process of building a cabinet several times I will link those videos in this one when we built the cabinetry for our kitchen so I'll leave those linked but essentially the same thing we're gonna do pocket holes to assemble the box together we're gonna install them and then come back with a face frame to make the edges on the front really really clean pocket holes I've just found is a great way to make a really structurally sound and strong box we also obviously are going to use wood glue in addition to the pocket holes to make it even stronger so the pieces that are gonna get pocket holes is the bottom the back skinny piece and the top skinny piece so the two sides are not gonna get pocket holes that's what we're gonna screw into We're gonna put this baby together.
we're looking at the back right now. Um, I think it looks pretty good. I think though, this is the front. So there's just the, the box itself. I think I need another piece here and it'll allow me to actually attach it to the wall. Up at the top, I think that'll work. So I'm actually gonna use this other piece that I cut for the other one. And we're gonna put it like that, right? And then with the same pocket holes. And then I think it'll be perfect. <sighs> okay. You know, every time I do something like with measurements and stuff, I'm like, I hope this works. We also have to put two by fours on the floor, but we're just checking size. You guys, no way. Hold on. Oh my god, did I make this too big? Wait, 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 wait. No way. Still is in the way. Okay. Literally, I mean, a quarter inch on each side, but I wanted it snug. Okay, essentially, here it is, right? So we need to lift this up. I'm gonna put a two by four base on the bottom because I want there to be a little bit of a toe kick at the bottom, but it fits. That's what the cabinet will look like. I do the face frames I know I want a shelf in here it's about 32 inches so I figured I could just split the difference and have a shelf at 16 inches and they both be the same so I just put pocket holes on the bottom of this piece and that's how I'm gonna attach them so this won't be a movable shelf but you can totally do that level this way <laughs> I can still brace it. Here's oh, actually. I think once the face frame is on here, that's gonna be good. Okay. I actually haven't made a face frame in a minute, <laughs> so I had to like rewrite myself what to do. So the face frames that we did in the kitchen are two inches thick. Um, so it's basically just a rim, a nice edge that goes on think of it like a picture frame like the frame itself that sits on top of your picture that covers up the edges of a piece of art you know and it just like looks nice that's essentially what it is and then this is also the piece that our doors get screwed into so it, it hinges it so i like to use a little harder of a wood this is pine wood it's not plywood uh, so i cut them down to two inches so i have our top which is long, it goes all the way across the cabinet we just built. The bottom, which is identical, goes all the way across, and three middles. So they're gonna go one, two, three, like that. So the ones that get pocket holes are the middles. And anytime you do pocket holes, you always wanna make sure that you're putting two. If you don't and you just think that you can have one, it'll actually start to twist on you. So you need two to anchor it, it to another side, basically, like that. Always make sure you have two. So obviously, one goes on each side, one on each edge. This one is the one that we need to separate the third cabinet. So two cabinets will open towards each other and then one will just be kind of like on its own. Okay, if I put it on that side, so the opening is 17 here and the opening is 34 here. 17 and 17 is 34. I figured it out. It needs to go right there. Okay. okay. Put a little glue on here.
attached. That's so nice. So imagine cabinet doors. Let's let's envision. This is obviously not the right size, but it'll give you an idea. Cabinet door. Like all this. Two here. One, two, three. That's awesome. So let's talk about shelving above this cabinet. So I've gone back and forth on two different like types of designs, right? One was more of like a floating shelf design. So it would just be the shelves. It would be more budget friendly because it would like reduce the amount of wood that I would need to purchase and, and put in. It's also less detailed because it's just the, the shelving going up and then the crown molding against the wall at the top. And then the second design was an actual bookcase, like build it out. There's going to be wood trim. It would just look more like a built-in, like a built-in bookcase. Um, so the, the crown molding would come to the front. There'd be wood down the sides. It'd look all built in, so to speak. So I've gone, I've gone back and forth, honestly. And I feel like because of I've had trouble like getting my hands on enough material and with like thinking more budget friendly, I'm I don't know which one I'll like in the end. So I think a great place to start is with the floating shelves. And we can always build onto that. We're gonna install the floating shelves, and I think it's gonna be pretty easy. I wanted them to be thick. I wanted them to be like substantial shelves, not just the thickness of a piece of wood like this. So we're actually gonna do like, it's gonna be three times this amount and I'll show you how we're, we're gonna do them. So the real question is, is how, how many shelves do we do? I planned on buying enough material for five, but I think that was because I just like odd numbers. 100 inches exactly. If, if we do five shelves, the distance between each shelf would be 14 inches. If we did four shelves, there'll be 17 and a half space. I feel like 17 and a half is better. What do you guys think? So to make the floating shelves, we have six pieces. I have three pieces for the brace. We're gonna attach this to the wall. And I have a long one for the back wall and then two short ones for each side. What you're gonna actually see, I have two long, really nice pieces. This is our pine boards. So these are gonna go from side to side. So I have one for the top and one for the bottom, one for the front. Whoa, is that too long? Okay, we'll deal with that later. Okay, so we're gonna start with our brace. Put a brace at the mark. If I go ahead and do this, it it's already there. Like you don't have to hold the screw while you're trying to hold the piece of wood. It like makes it a lot easier. So I'm gonna get one in and then I'll level it. There's our brace. So everything is nice and strong. And then this side is into the studs because this is just drywall. We're gonna nail this in. Now we're gonna put the bottom. If I can reach the nail gun, you guys. How do I feel about this space? I feel like I need to slide some support in there. Same dimensions. I think it'll keep it. You see this? It's, I can, I ever so slightly, but I can kind of squeeze it. I don't want to be able to do that. I just got three more. And nail, nail them in. Now there's no squeeze. No, yeah, I like that better. Nice. Okay, one more step. The front, and then we have a floating shelf that I'm pretty proud of. Now this is like too long. How did I cut this too long? We did it. A floating shelf.
on top was a problem but on the bottom I had to kind of like hold it and shoot it and the higher I got the more I had to twist to kind of like have enough strength to like drill in screws and nails and stuff I was so tired but I did it and so now you can really see the before and and after the, with the cabinetry and the shelves there it makes it feel larger for some reason it's kind of an optical illusion it's like filled out now and it has more weight this middle portion look less large and in charge, if that makes sense. It was like feeling very overwhelming in the center. And now with this being built out, it's it's feeling more balanced. Literally before and after. <laughs> so now I have to duplicate this on this side. I couldn't help myself, I actually put a frame up here. I am so glad we went with 17 inch. So each space is exactly 17 inches. Oh, this is 18 actually, because we still have to determine like what we're gonna do for the topper. My plan for the paint and the color of this is I want all the shelving and all the cabinetry, the cabinet doors painted this millstone gray. So it's gonna be that green gray color. Because we have so much rich wood tone, in this room already i need a balance all this trim is going to be wood all the wainscoting around the whole room is wood all the trim around the three doors in here is wood there's a lot happening with the wood tone and then all the floors obviously is wood so i need that other balance so i don't want to stain them going that victorian route of painting everything the same color also need to lime wash paint i have decided that i'm going to be making my own lime wash paint so we're going to be exploring that diy in the next episode i hope you guys enjoyed episode two in our living room makeover it's coming along i feel like there's going to be probably four episodes in this makeover we are also gearing up for the holiday season so we're going to be decorating very soon so i definitely need to get this space at least this wall done so that i can put up our christmas tree in this corner and we can decorate for the holidays so we have many many more exciting makeovers to come through the holiday season also if you guys didn't catch last year on my vlog channel which is my other channel that i upload twice a week i'm excited to announce yes this year i'm also doing vlogmas and if you haven't heard of vlogmas it is where i film and upload every day for the 25 days of Christmas. So we're gonna be spending the holidays together over there. But instead of it being lots of holiday content, lots of Christmas content, which there will be mixed in, I'm obviously renovating a house, so it is going to be 25 days of renovations, basically in some form, because that's what I'm gonna be doing throughout the holiday season. I will see you guys next Sunday. Bye guys. This looks good. Can't wait to decorate this. Can you guys imagine all the fun stuff? Frames and books and vases and pretty things. Excuse me? What do you think you're doing up there? Kids like, <laughs> what are you doing? <laughs>